Hey guys, how you doing? Greg here with Fox Family Heating and Air. And today I just wanted to talk about a question that I got asked on one of my videos. And I kind of thought it was a good question um, because we all deal with it out in the field um, when customers are looking over our back or they are wanting to constantly stand behind us while we're doing our work. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, how's that, how does that make you feel? Does it make you cringe? Uh, does it make you get a little uh, creepy feeling on the, on the backside of you? Or are you just okay with it? You're okay with, with people standing behind you because you're confident in what you do. Um, you know everything you need to do to do your job. It's not gonna happen just like that, 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 that. You know, sometimes we gotta stop, think, look, analyze, contemplate, <laughs> stock the part, get the part, put it in, you know? So, I mean, it's like, it's, it's uh, not always smooth. If you're not operating smoothly, some technicians will feel that pressure on their back and like, man, I wish this guy would just get off my back because cause, uh, I'm just trying to fix his AC, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, and this isn't even a guy that's like on your back just like constantly yapping at him at you either. Like he's just watching. So how do you feel about that? I can tell you how I feel about it. I personally have no issue with it. You know, just don't be like all on my back, like breathing down my neck. Like if I can literally feel you breathing on me, I'm probably going to say something to you. Um, you know, with customer service, you have to give, 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 and you're taking and taking and taking all the time. You know, you're taking crap from, uh, sorry customers. So you might be taking stuff from, uh, customers and you're constantly giving good customer service, but there is a fine threshold that you have to have. You can't constantly be giving, giving, giving. Uh, at some point you have to set a line like, hey man, can you not uh, literally lick my neck as you're watching me? <laughs> I feel like humidity is starting to build up a little bit back here. So I might say something like that. Uh, or I just say, hey guys, you know, hey, I got a little bit of, uh, you know, if you guys don't mind, could I have a little bit of space here? I'm so sorry. I just need a little bit of breathing room so I can uh, just kind of focus in on what I'm doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you doing that, you know is not a bad thing to say you know like you can stand up for yourself in a very polite way and and uh, uh, ask for the customer to kind of get out of your way but it's a good thing for customers to be involved in their system I mean it's like to know how their system's working they they're they're sitting there watching you but it kind of also adds to your honesty and to your integrity as you're sitting there doing the work that you're uh, as you're diagnosing, as you're troubleshooting, you know, that guy's just sat back there or that lady's just back there sitting there watching you putting your, your leads on different things here and testing different components. Um, so, so maybe it's not a really big deal that they're, that they're back there, uh, honestly, because, um, it really only adds value to what you're doing. If you're doing the right thing that you're supposed to be doing, which is being honest and diagnosing and, uh, being truthful, and uh, they're just kind of wanting to make sure that, um, you know, they're not getting take for a ride or anything. Sure, I understand. One thing I like to do with the customer, if they're gonna stand there, is I'll, you know, I'll, I'll kind of give them a little lesson, you know, like uh, I'm not trying to tell them, hey, let me educate you on your system here, you know, but hey, have you, you ever, have you ever uh, seen how your system works? Like, do you know how it, like, sequence of operation, how it works from beginning to, to flame, you know? And uh, a lot of people say no, they, they don't. Um, so that's when I, I, I love that moment because if the system's working, then I'll go ahead and, uh, and I'll go ahead and plug it in. I'll set a call for, uh, heat and then I'll, you know, just, you know, explain what happens at the control board, the 24 volts and then the inducer motor and then the, da, 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 da. it's just nice to watch, you know, just kind of list that off and then to show them, just let, let them watch as the hot surface igniter starts glowing and then the gas valve opens and then the flame pours over the flame sensor and then the, 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 you know so uh what we really like about our jobs people are interested in knowing about that stuff and if you could just like kind of tell them how it works you know that makes them better hvac owners you'll probably be back there less to take you know take care of and clean their system and stuff like that because now they know a little bit more about their system so Along with the sequence of events, I'll tell them about the safety features on the system. Because I know people in general just like to know that they don't know much about this furnace. All they know is there's flames burning through into a firebox, which seems crazy. 
But um, if you can show them the safety features, the flame rollouts, the high temperature limit switches, things like that, and explain to them that there's, there's multiple safeties built into this system, yeah, definitely let them know about that. Just point it out to them, show them so they know, you know. Um, don't show them how to reset it though, because <laughs> then they'll be back there resetting it all the time. And then I'll also show them like other common repairs that we do. Like, so say that day I'm there on an inducer motor or something like that. Um, I'll also just go ahead and point out other things that could fail down the road. I'm just letting you know, you know, your system's 17 years old and we're replacing your inducer motor. But you know, there's a control board um, that's around five or $600. Um, there's capacitors, there's a couple motors that you have uh, to deal with. Um, still your blower motor, condenser fan motor on the outdoor AC. Compressors, you know, a lot of those are some pretty common repairs, so I, I like to explain those. And if I'm in the heating season, I pretty much just stick to the furnace stuff. And if I'm in the AC mode, I pretty much just stick to the AC stuff. So I don't try to like, I don't try to like carry in the furnace stuff in with the AC. So, so let me ask you this: You're okay with them standing behind you, but now they're asking you, you know, personal questions. How do you respond to that? Do you even want to respond to that? Personally, I don't have a problem with people asking questions about my personal life. I like to talk about myself. I like to talk about my family. I like to talk about me and hockey and cycling and my hobbies. And I, I don't mind talking about myself. So, but uh, but some people do. Take my wife for example. She's you know she's just a little bit more on the. Um, she's opposite of me. That's what she is. She she um, wants to be. She's just very comfortable being quiet and focused in on her work and diligent and you know doing her thing so it's real simple guys you just end up saying you know hey if, if, if something's crossing the line and you know it, we were talking about the system now we're talking about me and I'm not really talk, comfortable talking about me um, you know there's a simple way to handle it and I'll typically apologize kind of up front I'll just say hey I'm so sorry I you know I don't mind talking about the system but if um, if you don't mind I just don't really want to talk about me so um, We'll just stay focused on the furnace and get back to work. So, and that's probably how I would handle something like that. Um, we're just trying to stay friendly and uh, positive. So, and you can't really be like a super jerk and just be like, "Dude, get back!" You know, <laughs> like you can't be like that. So, yo, hey, all right. Either way, you're gonna want to keep your interactions with the customers fairly short and infrequent. Uh, because, as you know, service calls can start piling up. So if we're sitting there having a, you know, just a grand time on the first call of the day, and we're sitting there chatting and yakking it up and stuff, well, you got calls coming up. So um, don't forget, you you can really easily get behind on the first call, and now you're an hour late to your second call. Second call makes you two hours late for your next call. So you know what I mean. Which brings me to my next point, and I think this is very useful for newer technicians out there in the field, okay? It's great to talk out there, it's great to know what you're doing out there in the field, it's great to be confident in what you're doing out there in the field. But you do not have to tell the customer every little step of the way what you're doing, how you're doing it, why you're doing it. You don't have to do that. So, I mean, that gets exhausting, okay? It's tough enough being a technician out in the field diagnosing and remembering all the little steps and things that you got to do so um, so save yourself the trouble and you know I just try to explain I just don't try to explain every single little detail or I'll purposely not say what I'm thinking on my mind because a lot of times I'll just end up saying it out loud like oh it must be oh. and you say and then and the customers like huh what what'd you say you know and you're like, oh, nothing. I was just uh, thinking out loud. You're like, oh, okay. Is it fixed yet? You know, so, yeah, that's why I try to tell people, like, when you're finishing up a job or, you know, especially, like, after installs. This is a great point for installs. At the end of the day, you guys just spent your whole time, your whole day, installing this equipment, right? It's going to take more than just a simple fire up of the button, you know, firing up of the thermostat to get that system right, uh, to get that system working. We, sure, a lot of us, we install, we go to the thermostat, we turn it on, we kick it on, we got a call for heat, the system fires up and, and, and everything does work correctly. But what if it doesn't work correctly? Maybe, maybe we shouldn't be going around saying, hey, what's wrong? Oh, it's not working? You know, or like, uh, uh, hey, what's wrong? 
you know, like, and you're saying that around the customer, like, that doesn't sound good to him. He, he just spent $10,000 with you or $12,000 with you. And at the end of the day, he doesn't, they don't like those customers. They don't want to hear that. Um, so you just kind of have to mind yourself, keep it on the inside. And if, if something might be wrong, go to the person, get really close to your, your, uh, your partner that you're working with and just be like, Hey, what's up, man? You know, or something like that, you know, what's going on? Uh, kind of under your breath, you know, so, and keep it low. The customer doesn't need to hear that. And then as you guys are doing your firing up and um, commissioning of the system, then it starts coming to fruition that everything is fine and we just had a little wire that was there and something like that. But, um, but we don't need to explain all that to every little step, every little mishap to the customers. Don't need to explain that because um, it's it can really start piling up or sorry, not piling up, but it can just uh, decrease your um, integrity or value as a technician if you're constantly that guy that's out there being like, but I try not to say too much out in the field. At the same time, I try to be extremely customer service oriented, but there's that line that you have to cross when, you know, maybe just don't, we don't have to talk so much, uh, you know, uh, when we're, diagnosing the problem or when we're installing or if we're having issues and we're we got a, I got another partner with me and we're working on something but something's not working right you know we don't need to be like ah no it's not working now you know eh, call each other on the phone and be like hey <laughs> hey is it working no okay let's try this now okay <laughs> so but uh point made point taken new guys and then one final thing, you know, like when you have a technician or a peer that's that's looking over your shoulder, uh, or maybe even a boss, maybe even like a like a field supervisor or something like that watching uh, over you, you know, they're mostly likely just like really into HVAC, just like you are, and um, they're just trying to see how you do it. Maybe there's a different way of doing things, and um, as long as he's not back there yapping your ear your ear off. Um, I really don't see anything, any problem with another technician sitting there watching how you're doing because he's probably just learning another way of doing it. Like he knows how you do it or maybe he's just making sure that you do it to company standards, you know? So, I mean, well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on this video. I'd gotten one of those questions, you know, on the, you know, there on the comments uh, section of one of my videos. And I was like, man, there's a lot of good questions here in this. So I wanted to start addressing some of those, uh, those questions. Um, uh, my next, uh, one of my next, uh, videos is going to be how to handle angry customers. So, uh, I'm looking forward to putting that one out. Uh, in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe Fox family heating and air. I appreciate you guys watching so much and uh, we'll see you on the next video. All right. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.